You know this game. I know this game. Everybody knows this game. And that's Stray. You play as a cat who falls into a walled city populated by robots, machines, and some creepy enemies. And your goal is to make it back to the surface with your drone friend B12. The game was first announced during PlayStation's Future of Gaming event in June of 2020. Over the next couple years, the game had multiple trailers and release dates, with the first official release date being in October of 2021. It then got delayed to early 2022, and then it got delayed to who knows when. Then in June of 2022, during a PlayStation State of Play, Stray finally got a release date, which was July 19th of 2022. So it sounds like Stray had a two year development window. And some people may think, you just play as a cat. How hard could it be? Maybe the developers just want a quick buck because they know the entire internet loves and adores cats, right? Well, the game's actually been in development since 2015, and it's made by the dev team Blue 12 Studios, which is a small team located in Southern France. Founders of Blue 12 Studios are Colas Kula and Vivian Mermit Guyanet. I said those names totally wrong, but they wanted to pursue an independent project after working with Ubisoft, which is understandable. Nobody likes Ubisoft. And they had a dev blog sharing updates on Stray called HK Dev Blog. And after sharing some game footage in April of 2016, Annapurna Interactive reached out to publish the project. And Annapurna Interactive publishes a lot of projects, and they recently published the game Neon White, which came out back in June, which by the way, it has a video on this channel. You should go watch it. Either way, those are the teams behind the game. Annapurna Interactive with publishing, Blue 12 Studios with developing. But how is the game? How does it play? And does it live up to the internet's insane hype for it? Let's talk about the story of the game and the general environment. I already said in the last section what the game was about quickly, but if we're talking about length in the game, you can easily beat the game in a few hours if you're not exploring every nook and cranny and looking at all the achievements. But if you're being a completionist and trying to get as much done as possible, you could probably beat the game in 7 to 10 hours. Personally, for me, I've been loving trying to get every single achievement in whatever game I'm playing, and Stray has been no different. I got all the achievements in almost 14 hours, with the hardest achievement being completing the game in less than 2 hours, which I still did in my first try. The story has 3 main towns that you visit, which have the main activity, with the slums, ant village, and Midtown. All three of these areas have some small activities for you to do with side quests, like collecting eight sheets of music in the slums for a robot named Rusk will get you a free badge, or collecting three flowers in the ant village for a robot named Malo. And now in terms of side quests, it seems Midtown doesn't seem to have anything, but it does have a few fun achievements that you can easily miss. All three of these areas have a beautiful environment around them, and you can find yourself exploring every nook and cranny your little cat body can fit into. In terms of main story, Midtown and the slums actually have unique collecting and trading quests to help move the story forward compared to Ant Village. In Ant Village, all you need to do is talk to a single robot before being able to move on. Personally for me, I really enjoyed the collecting and trading in Midtown and the slums. It reminded me a bit of Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, where you trade 15 items throughout the entire game and end up getting a boomerang. Now, obviously Stray doesn't have any weapons, but the trading and collecting was a fun little addition to the game. Obviously, in Midtown, it's a little bit different as the collecting and all that is kind of mandatory, but it's still really fun. In between all these areas, though, the game still has some exciting story. One of the main enemies in the game is the Zerks, which is a virus that can kill anything, including robots. And the only thing that kills them is UV light, which you get the power of later in the game. But between these areas, you find yourself having exciting chase sequences while the Zerks chase you, or even a few puzzles while outwitting the Zerks and trapping them. The developers do a fantastic job setting up the environment every time you have a chase sequence with the Zerks. Really, the environment always feels dark, creepy, and dead. It's beautifully well made and reminds you a bit of a horror film with one of your main enemies chasing you down and you running for your life. And you heard that right one of the main enemies because there's more you meet one more main enemy towards the end of the game in midtown which is the sentinels who basically run midtown i'll say i was a bit sad that the zerk seemed to be non-existent after a certain chapter but they got replaced with a much deadlier enemy throughout the midtown chapter and beyond you have a few stealth related missions where you go through sentinel zones without being detected and if they detect you they can potentially kill you in one shot i'll say these stealth zones are fun and the puzzles are simple but if you're rushing the game you can easily zoom past them and maneuver yourself to easily avoid the bullets but they can probably kill you a few times hell in my two hour speed run of this game i died like six times to them in one area but i still beat the game with 11 minutes to spare a game like this wouldn't be complete without a cute sidekick and companion and of course, early on in the game, we meet B12, who's our little robot friend. Throughout the entire game, we restore their memories and learn more about their past life. And the game has a lot of memories you can recover to help piece the story together on what happened to the world and how it ended up the way it is. The story is so much more in depth than you'd expect. I don't want to spoil the entire thing, but for a game where you play as a cat, to have such beautiful and well-made environments, a super in-depth story that's really well written, I'm honestly surprised. I didn't have the highest expectations for this game, but I was blown out of the water with it. Now that was the story in the environment as a whole, but you're probably wondering, how does this game play? Does it feel any good? 
Well, let me tell you, it feels pretty great. The environments are designed so well with a cat in mind. You can jump around almost freely everywhere, and the game has so many small benefits that you wouldn't expect that don't necessarily improve the gameplay, but definitely puts a smile on your face. Like nuzzling some robots and seeing a little heart pop up on their face. Let's be honest, if a cat does that to any of us, our hearts light up. On top of that, the game also has some places for you to just scratch and just relieve some stress. As we all know, the life of a cat can be quite stressful. Those are obviously just a couple nice little feel good moments. They don't add much to the gameplay, but there's not much I can say about the movement. It just feels really good overall. I don't know how to explain it. You can see the evolution of it by browsing the developer's Twitter page. You can see the amount of love that was put into this project and you can really appreciate the outcome. Of course, all this talk of positives, you're probably wondering if there's any negatives about the game. And of course, there's a couple negatives, but the positives definitely outweigh the negatives. But the negatives, well, there were some glitches. And the glitches, they were minimal. I only ran into them while trying to speed run through the game, which is kind of funny. The glitches were just glitching through the floor and then glitching in the jail somehow. And finally, I guess one last negative was random frame drops. Maybe I have some PC settings messed up or my PC is dying, but I played this game on Steam as a physical copy isn't released yet. If you couldn't tell, I love physical copies. A good handful of times, I just have really bad frame drops in the game for a solid three seconds. Now, of course, the movement still feels good as a whole, and these frame drops could have been user error. It still just didn't feel too good when it did happen. Outside of that, the game felt great. Personally, I really enjoyed everything that this game had to offer. I don't know how much replayability there is with the game as I've already beat the game twice and I'm unsure about my future with it. Like I said, the story was so well written and in depth and that surprised me. Some NPC robots inside the cities were a little lifeless, but a lot of them had some backstory and even a name, which is nice for characters you don't even need to interact with to move the story forward. This is a perfect game to just chill and to take your time with. It's well made and not too long. The game can be beat fast and even with that, I feel you can get your money's worth as the game is only 30 US dollars. If you're a physical collector like myself, you can pre-order a physical copy Copy that comes with a poster, a steel bookcase, art cards, and a patch for only 45 US dollars, which is set to release in September. Just in case any of you want a physical copy of this game, I'll put a link in the description. I gotcha. What else can I say about this game? You play as a cat, talk with some robots, and go on one amazing short journey. I felt that the price was easily justified, and hell, maybe we'll see some speedruns of the game because it is pretty fun going through the game fast. The internet was really excited for this game, and I had no strong feelings whatsoever, but I'm glad I picked it up and was able to experience it firsthand. If you have a Steam or a PlayStation, you should pick it up. You'll probably have some fun. It's a timed exclusive with PlayStation, so if you were hoping for an Xbox or Switch copy, you're gonna need to wait for a little bit. But really, pick it up. That's that's all I can say. But thanks for watching this video and huge shout out to the people who support me on Patreon. I'm just one guy who streams like five days a week on Twitch, so I try to make videos when I can, but I appreciate all the support on YouTube, Twitch, Patreon, everything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.